Hi guys and welcome in the next video. So today I wanted to continue uh, our KUKA programming and I wanted to talk a little bit about the smart path, about the KCP that's used to program KUKA robots. Why I wanted to talk about it? Well, the reason is quite simple. It's because uh, when I'll be showing you more and more things, uh, there are there is information on that screen that's useful for us and that we're going to use later on to troubleshoot, to program the robot and to understand what the robot is telling us. So I think it will be a good idea to make a quick overview about uh, what's useful and uh, where to look for it and how to find that information quickly. So I hope you're going to enjoy the video and let's get started. Five, seven, one, two, All right, so what am I, um, what I'm going to talk about today? So we're going to go uh, through overview of the top of the uh, KUKA KCP. I'm going to tell you uh, where the submit interpreter is located, where the program is running and what are the colorful icons at the top and what they tell us, where is the message window, how to change the tools. I know we did that, but it's going to be a good reminder uh, for our future videos. As well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the buttons that are located around the Teach Pendant and what we're going to do with them because I'm going to use them to execute the programs, stop the programs and so on. We'll make a quick uh, check on the menus that are important for us. So it's easier for you guys to navigate through them while I show stuff on the uh, videos. Then you can, when you're going to program by yourself, then you're going to be easily able to navigate and find the information that might not be shown on the video or you're just curious how to make it work. I'm going to also show you how to log in uh, to a different user mode. Uh, so how to log in as an expert because that unlocks new things. I will show you also how to select the program so you can actually run it and a little bit more. And all of that is going to be shown in the exercises. So guys, don't forget to subscribe, give it a like, and let's get to the exercise. All right, hi guys, and welcome to the exercises. So as I said, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the smart path or KCP itself. So I did a brief introduction in other videos, but that one is going to be much more detailed and you will understand much more. So first thing first, uh, the robot icon that you will see here and the same as your on your real teach pendants uh, is the menu icon. So when you click it, you will see the main menu and you can navigate uh, through different options that are over there. We're going to get there in the second. The next thing that you see in here uh, is the robot name. So however you're going to name your robot, that's what you're going to see. Also, the, whenever you're going to make a backup, the backup is going to have the name of your robot. So in my case, if I'm going to make a backup, it will just say future robotics. Then what we have uh, in here are the status keys. So there are uh, three of them and the fourth one uh, indicates the mode. So let's start with the uh, S one. So that one is a submit interpreter key and it tells you the state of our submit interpreter. If it's started, uh, so that's the color and uh, the case right now, is it stopped or is it canceled? So if we stop it, as you can see, it's changed the color to the red. And if we cancel it, uh, it's gray out, means it's not active. And when we hit start, it's going to start and change the color to the one that you see right now. The next icon is the drives icon. So uh, in our case, it's going to be always on, but uh, normally when you have your regular robot, that will represent your deadman switch. So uh, whenever you hold the deadman, the drives are going to be in on state, the state that you can see right now. Uh, when you release the deadman or in case you were, when you are in uh, auto mode and you don't have your uh, safety fence closed, that one is going to turn out uh, to O. So this one and it's going to be gray out, which means that the drives are not enabled and the robot will not move. Probably the last one is the most interesting one for you. So that one is our uh, program uh, indicator. So it can have quite a few states. So it can be a gray out, which means that there is no active program. 
Then uh, it can have a yellow color, uh, which means that the program is uh, at the program is uh, selected, and it's at the beginning of the program, and the program is not active. Then it can be green, and that means the program is selective and it's actually running right now. Red, which means that the program has stopped, and uh, black, which means that the program come to an end. We're going to uh, go through that and you're going to see all of that uh, when we're going to do the exercise with um, creating our first program and we run it, you'll see all of those states. And as you can see, it has also two additional options. We just cancel the program and reset the program. And those will become active when you have a selected program. And we're going to talk about this during our uh, program creation, but that's coming soon. And the last button that you have in here that it indicates T1, uh, that's our mode that's currently selected. So uh, in my case, I can change the modes here. You need to use the uh, mode selector for that when you have the real robots, but basically depending on uh, the mode that you will select, you'll see that it's going to change uh, to the mode. So it represents the correct mode. Next one are the speed keys. So basically you can uh, select two types of speed in the KUKA robots. One of them is the program override. So that's how fast you're going to execute the uh, robot program. And the second one is the jog override. So that's how fast you want to jog the robot. So just in case, you can always keep your jog override slow. That means if you want to jog using the keys, the robot will move slow. But if you want to play the program, which by play, I mean you want to execute it, you want to change the program override. So when you will be executing the robot by the program by hand, the program override is going to slow down your execution, but you're going to use that one as well. When you're uh, running in auto and you want to slow down the robot, you can also uh, change this in here and that will slow down your robot. So there are two ways. Uh, one way is doing this by uh, clicking in here and moving those. And the second one is by clicking those buttons. As you can see, the uh, speed changes. So you can use the hard keys that are uh, located on the teach pendant, or you can use the uh, touch screen to change the speed. The next icon allows us to select the run mode. So it can be a go, which means the program will just continue and you will run it smoothly. Then you have a motion that uh, the program will stop at each uh, robot motion. And then there is a single step where you're going to just line the robot line by line. So you need to click the forward button or the play button to move to the next line of the program. Right uh, on the right hand side of the uh, of that is our tool and base selection. So over over here we're going to select our uh, frames and our uh, our tools and our frames. So uh, that's a little bit easier to access. For example, in Fanuc, because you can change uh, them a little bit faster. You just click here, you choose the number and the uh, new frame or new tool is selected. And the last one I already showed to you is the incremental jogging. Uh, so that has been described in our uh, jog video. So uh, please check it out. All right, uh, then on in here, we have the options for moving the mouse. I don't have a mouse in here, but in the real robot, you have a mouse and you can select that you want to move just using the axis or using a word coordinate system, base and tool. Again, that's all described in the jogging. The icon in here, so as you can see, there are two the same icon. This is connected with the keys. This one is connected with the mouse. But again, I describe all of that uh, in my jog video. So please uh, check it out. I don't want to go through that again. All right, uh, there is a little bit more keys in here uh, that do uh, other things. So the first one is uh, an icon with the pencil, let's say, that will open a, a keyboard for you and you can type things. Usually in most cases, whenever there is something that you can type, that keyboard will pop up out automatically. So you don't need to push that button, 
but sometimes there are uh, places where you want to change something and the uh, HMI for, with the keyboard won't show up by itself. Then you're going to, key, to click that icon and it will show up. Then those are your three main keys that are also located in the back of the teach pendant, uh, but it's a little bit easier to access them in here. Uh, actually only the play button is located in the back of the teach pendant, the stop button and the backward button is not located on the back. So uh, that's a stop button. So when you hit it, you're going to stop the program execution. This is the backward button that allows us to uh, move the robot backwards. This is the forward button that allows us to move the robot forward. So those will be pretty much key items. Uh, in my case, when I click it, it's going to hold. As you can see, it lights up uh, on your real robot. You actually have to hold the key in order to uh, keep the program executing. And the last four buttons in here are uh, user keys. So you can program uh, whatever you like uh, to those buttons. You can write a custom functions uh, or you can install uh, KUKA tech packages and for example, with a gripper or a spot gun and the functions will show up here. We'll get to that probably uh, when we go to more complicated stuff. And now one of the most important uh, and probably uh, the one that's not being read a lot and that's uh, the indication menu in here, actually the notification bar. So this is one of the key items that you should that you guys should remember about because whenever there is a fault uh, whenever something happens don't just click confirm all because that's going to uh, reset all of the active faults you actually want to always click and see what are the faults that are right now on the robot or what information the robot is trying to give you in order to understand what might have happened so there are actually five types of the information that can be passed here, uh, even though you have only four icons in here. There is one more uh, type of information that's being passed and those are the dialogue messages that are not showed up here just because they don't do uh, or they uh, like require uh, interaction with the operator. So, and they are custom, so they are not showed here. So. As you can see, there are acknowledge messages, status messages, notification messages, and wait messages. So whenever there is something going on, you will see how many um, notifications you have or messages you have, and you can kind of uh, see what's going on. So there are quite a few status in here. So the first one are uh, the messages that require acknowledgement. And with the red messages, the one with the X, you will not be able to run the robot. You need to fix what's happened, clear that message by clicking OK next to it or confirm all, which is going to clear all, and only then the robot will continue. The second one are the status messages, and this is pretty much the same. If you have a status messages, you cannot clear the status messages and the robot will not move as long as uh, the state is happening. So as long as the uh, status messages is being displayed, in our case, software limit switch a, on the axis 2, as long as you don't move the robot out of the way, you won't be able to clear that message. Then we have uh, non the notification messages. So those are just informations in they won't stop the robot. They'll just show up to tell you something and wait messages, which uh, will indicate that the robot is waiting for an input, for example, or something else. And you will be able to simulate it uh, in some cases. And uh, this is the last type of the notification that uh, is shown here. And like I said, there is also the dialogue messages, but uh, they are not shown in here. We get to that also later. So as you can see also, uh, on each of the message, there is either OK. So that's basically to confirm the message. So when we click on it, the message will disappear. As well, there is a question mark uh, right next to it. So when something happens and you're not fully sure, you can use the help to tell you like, hey, what's going on? So whenever you click on that uh, question mark, some quick information will show up and it will tell you like, hey, what happened? Uh, what might uh, happen? that you saw this message and what you might need to do in order to fix it. So in our case, we uh, jog the robot or the robot move to the limit switch 
and you need to move in the different uh, axis direction in order to free it. Uh, and now sometimes of course you do want to click OK on all of those, that's why you have the confirm all button and when you click that all of the messages will be gone except for the message that is not cleared. So in our case that's software limit on axis 2 and we cannot click, we cannot confirm it because the robot is hitting axis 2. The only way how we're going to get rid of it is going to go to axis, enable our teach pendant, jog in the a minus, A2 minus, and the message is gone because we are no longer uh, touching the axis too. Okay, so that will be pretty much all from the uh, main screen. Oh no, one more very important thing that we will talk about and I already make a short video is your work visual project that you can see in here. So clicking on that icon basically will tell you uh, what is the ac actual active project and when you cl click open, so uh, in our case, there is no active project, uh, so you can not really see what's going on. But uh, that's where we will load our new projects. That's what you're going to see. Okay, let's close the project management. And the last thing that I wanted to, uh, well, actually two more things is uh, how do we log in as a new user? So basically you're going to go to uh, configuration user group and that's where you change the user group from programmer to expert, safety maintenance, administrator, or whomever else. So basically you're just going to click on the one that you, that you want to log in as. You're going to type in the password. You're going to click uh, log on. And then you will get the message that you are actually uh, logging as an expert and you were logged out from the operator mode and you can click confirm all. Why there are different levels? Uh, because you don't want people that don't know what they are doing uh, changing the things on the robot. The first thing you can notice as we uh, log in as an expert, there is much more uh, options available for us. So if I'm going to log out or log in as a programmer, uh, some of the stuff is going to be uh, gray out and uh, the lower you, you're going to go with your um, privileges, the less you're going to see. So like we cannot change the sub interpreter, we cannot do status key, we cannot change the safety configuration because of the level of the access that available. And we're going to talk also about the level of the access. So the user groups in the later videos. Uh, and the last thing basically is selecting the program. So whenever you're going to select, so that's where your programs are. Uh, if you want to navigate throughout your programs, you're going to use that left hand side menu. So when you click uh, on here, you're going to always get to the location that's shown. So you, when you click one time, it's going to open. If there is any subfolders, you're going to click on it and click, and then you're seeing your different modules, your different programs. So then you're going to select the program that you want and then you can select or open and we're going to talk about differences between select and open in the future videos. So when you hit select, you can see that your program is selected, like I said, uh, and now you can cancel reset the program, but that's to be discussed on the next video, guys. All right, that will be all from the exercises. Thank you. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, like always guys, leave your comments down below, give it a like, subscribe, and what can I say? See you in the next video. Bye bye!